The Secret to the Fountain of Youth, Sea Moss Ology, written by Jamari Kirby and Shana Maud. This textbook is used to increase one's confidence and knowledge of sea moss. Introduction Is sea moss the new wonder food? The ocean makes up approximately 70% of our planet, and the most effective natural holistic hidden treasures live beyond the shore. Seaweed, for instance, absorbs vitamins from the seabed, making the marine vegetable filled with even more vitamins and nutrients than mainland grown fruits and veggies. Sea moss is the collective name given to a group of algae plants. There are over 200 species of algae classified as sea moss. Sea moss is also known as Irish moss, carrageenan moss, chondrus crispus, or seaweed. Sea moss is an ultimate superfood health supplement and is vastly used in commercial foods and beauty care products. Sea moss is now used in a vast number of medicines and is a perfectly nutritious superfood to enhance your diet for energy, detox, and weight loss. Sea moss is a good source of many nutrients. It is high in carbohydrates, which is great for fiber and weight loss. Sea moss contains the protein collagen, which is the secret to skin and hair care. Sea moss is known to be a good source of micronutrients such as folate, calcium, magnesium, zinc, iron, potassium, selenium, iodine, and vitamins A, B, D, E, F, and K. Why is sea moss important? Sea moss is a good source of macro and micronutrients. Macronutrients are the nutrients people use in the largest amounts. They consist of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Macronutrients are the nutritive components of food that the body needs for energy and to maintain its structure and functions. Micronutrients, often called vitamins and minerals, are essential to wholesome development, ailment prevention, and well-being. With the exception of vitamin D, micronutrients aren't produced in the body and have to be derived from the diet. Sea moss is a good source of many immune-boosting nutrients that replenish and revitalize the body. The prebiotic effect of sea moss helps the gut, digestive system, run smoothly. It certainly eliminates harmful bacteria and improves overall health. It is one of the recommended and best foods for dieting because it's low in fat, calories, and sugar. It consists of many nutrients and energy that can boost the function of the body. Sea moss is a good source of anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral, and anti-aging properties. Sea moss aids in and promotes energy, immune system support, digestive support, joint pain support, heart health support, menstrual health support, thyroid support, and more. Below are some of the known characteristics when incorporating sea moss regularly. Sea moss 4. Benefits and Characteristics 1. Respiratory Health Sea moss helps dissolve phlegm, soothes inflammation, prevents congestion, and clears out lungs. 2. Digestive Support and Gut Health Sea moss is high in fiber and promotes healthy digestion. It's a mild laxative and soothes inflamed tissues within the gut. Sea moss can help ease nausea, heartburn, and indigestion. 3. Joint Pain Relief Sea moss is packed with collagen, antioxidants, and anti-inflammatory properties. 4. Mental and emotional well-being. Sea moss contains potassium, which is beneficial to mental health conditions like anxiety, depression, moodiness, and agitation. It's also beneficial to children with ADHD. 5. Heart health. Sea moss is rich in potassium, which plays a major role in heart health. It helps to lower blood pressure by balancing the negative effects of sodium, such as salt. Immune system. Sea moss has antimicrobial effects, which can help fight infections. Metabolism boost. Produces thyroid hormones, which boost metabolism. The iron content is efficient in transporting oxygen to tissues to help meet metabolic demands. 8. Appetite control. Helps control cravings, decreases the chance of eating too much. 9. Sexual health. Sea moss contains zinc, which plays a key role in a healthy reproductive system. 
sea moss also improves sexual desire, alleviates feminine dryness, and decreases sex drive. 10. Skin care. Sea moss is a great source of collagen. It may help to reduce wrinkles, hydrate the skin, and protect it from environmental elements. 11. Thyroid health. Sea moss helps to balance thyroid hormones since it's high in iodine, which is essential to synthesize thyroid hormones. Chapter 1. Understanding sea moss and seaweed. Seaweed belongs to three main groups that can be distinguished by their dominant pigments. These three groups include red, green, and brown algae. Sea moss species such as Gracilaria and Eucuma are part of the red algae family. Dulse is another algae that belongs to the red algae family. Green and brown algae are generally easy to recognize. Kelp and bladder rack are a part of the brown algae family, while sea lettuce and spirulina are part of the green algae family. The species of red seaweed may be different from one site to another. The colors can vary from yellow to light brown to purple. Variations of the sea moss species may not have the red pigment, but will have bright green instead. The shape of the plant and the type of branching is affected by water conditions, which can add to the difficulty in identifying many of the red seaweeds. Much of the commercial seaweed species today are reds or browns. Reds are used in the Caribbean. Like all seaweeds, they have no true roots, leaves, or flowers. The entire seaweed plant absorbs nutrients that are dissolved in the surrounding seawater. The Caribbean Sea contains hundreds of different species of seaweeds. However, very few are used in food today. The most popular are species such as Gracilaria and Eucuma, known as carrageenan. Gracilaria consists of warm water seaweeds. There are more than 100 species in the world, some of which have very important economic value. Gracilaria is used as food and in the preparation of food products. Sea moss throughout time. Seaweed has been used medicinally throughout time in numerous cultures. The Romans used seaweed to treat the skin from wounds, burns, and rashes. In Scotland during the 18th century, physicians used dried seaweed to effectively drain abscess from the lining of the stomach. Abscess is a limited pocket of pus that collects in tissues, organs, or areas in the body. The Scottish additionally inserted seaweed into the cervix in an attempt to treat dysmenorrhea, that is characterized with the aid of using excessive and common menstrual cramps and pain at some point of a period. Due to its exceptionally nutrient-dense profile, seaweed has stimulated botanical, industrial, and pharmaceutical interest. Seaweed has been used in meals and remedies throughout Asia. A traditional Chinese remedy uses a variety of seaweed to treat cancer. Additionally, Reviews have proven that Chinese and Japanese cultures used seaweed to aid with goiter and different glandular problems. Chapter 2. Understanding Agars versus Carrageenan. Agar is extracted from red algae, seaweeds, such as gelidium and gracilaria. Agar is used as a gelatinous substance in the food industry. Gelidium and Gracilaria are the two red algae species used to extract agar, while Chondrus crispus is the red algae used to extract carrageenan. Carrageenan is another natural substance, known as hydrocolloid, that forms a gel often extracted from the crimson, red algae species, such as Chondrus crispus. Hydrocolloids are carbohydrates used in many ingredients to enhance their shelf life and quality. These components are also used to regulate texture of items such as ice cream, salad dressings, gravies, processed meats, and beverages. Sea moss has been around since the beginning of time and has been in the food industry via the following applications. Stabilizer, emulsifier, thickener, texture enhancer. Applied to milk-based and fruit-based drinks. Used for ice cream smoothness. Excellent jello replacement vegan products, in salads. Chapter 3. Sea Moss Cultivation and Processing 
the cultivation of crops in the sea is known as mariculture. Mariculture for sea moss includes a range of activities such as selecting a good site, identifying suitable seed material, regular maintenance of plots, correct harvesting procedures, post-harvesting processing, and marketing. Until the 1980s, all seaweeds used in the Caribbean were harvested from wild populations. This is also known as wild-crafted sea moss. As the demand exceeded the supply, the wild stock dwindled everywhere it was harvested. Due to the good source of collagen and agar, many major food and beauty corporations buy it in tons. This is why islands like St. Lucia developed programs to explore alternative methods of cultivating sea moss. Since then, many in St. Lucia have taken up sea moss farming as a profitable occupation. Other islands such as Grenada, St. Vincent, Dominica, Barbados, Antigua, Jamaica, and Haiti have incorporated technologies used for cultivation. Two cultivation methods of Gracilaria were developed in the 1980s. In St. Lucia, Lesser Antilles, Gracilaria was successfully cultivated on lines suspended near the surface by floating bamboo. These were later replaced by plastic bottles. A system of suspended cultivation with ropes and buoys was later developed in Namibia, while experiments with suspended ropes have also been made in Cuba, South Africa, India, the Philippines, and New Zealand. A diversity of cultivation methods have been developed in different places, which is also consistent with the great variety of species of Gracilaria and their great range in temperature and latitudinal tolerance. The typical habitats of these species are sheltered environments such as bays, estuaries, or river mouths. They grow on intertidal or subtidal rocky, sandy, or sandy, muddy substrates or on rocky outcrops associated with sandy beaches. They can be intertidal or subtidal, down to 20 meters in depth, attached to small stones, partially covered by sand, or anchored in sand often in areas with good water circulation. Rope farming. Rope farming techniques for sea moss are also known as harvested or farm-grown sea moss. Rope farming may be a safer or environmentally friendly way to harvest seaweed compared to wild crafted. Seaweeds play a major role in marine ecosystems. As the first organism in marine food chains, they provide nutrients and energy for animals and marine life. The growth of the seaweed aquaculture industry is good for the economy and good for the ocean. The process of growing seaweed is environmentally friendly. Apart from planting the seeds and ensuring the seaweed is in a clean environment, seaweed often does not need feeding or need additional attention. The plants can grow naturally. In fact, seaweed farms also create safe and healthy nursery grounds for young fish and crustaceans that can later be harvested commercially or improve wild population levels. The presence of seaweed farms may prevent deep sea bottom trawling in certain areas, which may protect the seafloor. Two methods of outplanting using ropes are utilized to grow gracilaria. One starts from vegetative materials that are tied or inserted with a rope. The supplies of seed stalks also may be sourced from the wild, from crops obtained in previous cultivation or from nursery reared cuttings. The second method involves reproductive materials used as a source of spores that are left to settle on the surface of the ropes. Did you know? Sea moss cultivation and farming is a popular source of income in the Caribbean on islands like St. Lucia. The ropes or lines used can be monofilament, nylon, or other suitable line. Durability of the line in seawater should be tested before large quantities of line are purchased. The rope can be opened to insert the gracilaria fragments, or they could be tied at regular intervals to the main rope using pieces of raffia or tape. Once the seaweed is attached, ropes are then suspended, stretched between stakes buried in the sediment, or supported at different levels by buoys or rafts. Light intensity and transparency of the water column are important factors that may limit survival and growth of the species under cultivation. Field conditions are site and species specific and should be tested before investing into a large-scale farming operation. 
rope farming results in different levels of production depending on climatic conditions. Today, the farming of seaweeds consists of the plant being anchored to substrates such as ropes or nets. Best practices are to farm in water conditions that are suitable and non-polluted. The term wildcrafted. Wildcrafting is the practice of harvesting plants from their natural or wild habitat, primarily for food or medicinal purposes. It applies to uncultivated plants wherever they may be found and is not necessarily limited to wilderness areas. Wildcrafted sea moss comes from the ocean. In fact, wildcrafted sea moss grows on intertidal or subtidal rocky, sandy, or sandy muddy substrates, or on rocky outcrops associated with sandy beaches. They can be intertidal or subtidal, down to 20 meters in depth, attached to small stones, partially covered by sand, or anchored in sand, often in areas with good water circulation. Note, seaweed is algae, absorbing their nutrients from the water around them as they don't have complex root systems like their terrestrial counterparts. In fact, they have no true roots, leaves, or flowers. The entire seaweed plant absorbs nutrients that are dissolved in the surrounding seawater. It's important to be aware of what body of water the sea moss originated in. The waters can be polluted or unprotected, which can be harmful as the toxins are absorbed into the sea moss during the process of harvesting. Post-harvesting. The first stage of processing is cleaning. The plant should be cleaned as much as possible in the seawater while still alive. Once the plants have been dried, any silt is much more difficult to remove without soaking the plants again. If the plants are washed after they have been dried, some nutrients may be washed out and lost. Sun drying and bleaching. Drying and bleaching are done in the sun. Expose the plants to the sun in an enclosed, clear plastic bag for the day. This will heat up and bleach the plants. Turn them from dark to gold. It's important to protect the plants from rain while they are drying. As the plants dry, salt crystals form on the outside and can be removed by shaking the plant. Any other impurities must also be removed at this stage. The seaweed is now ready for sale. Chapter 4 Understanding Common Species of Sea Moss The Caribbean has a variety of seaweed plant life that consists of many economically essential seaweeds, specifically in the Rhodophysae, red algae family. Various red algae are harvested and widely used for beverages and desserts especially in the Caribbean, where the products are referred to as sea moss. Gracilaria is a group of warm water seaweed, classified as red algae and used to extract agar. There are more than 100 species in the world, some of which have very important economic value. Gracilaria is harvested throughout the Caribbean. Gracilaria is used as gelatin due to its gelling, thickening, and stabilizing properties and in the preparation of food products as a food additive, Chondrus crispus, also known as Irish carrigan, is a species of red algae which grows abundantly along the rocky parts of the Atlantic coast of Europe and North America. Chondrus crispus is commonly found in colder waters. It is used in food industries for its carrageenan, which is also used in preparing ice cream, chocolate milk, custards, cheeses, jellies, confectionery products, meat, and for clarification of beer and wine. Carrageenan is often present in nut milk, meat products, and yogurt. Eucuma is naturally found within the range of 20 degrees on either side of the equator in the Indo-Pacific region from eastern Africa to Guam and are most concentrated in Southeast Asia. The carrageenophyte, known as eucuma, is commonly harvested in Belize. Previously before the over-exploitation, it was harvested in Antigua and Barbuda. Eucuma may be found below the low tide mark to the upper subtidal zone of a reef, growing on sand to rocky seafloor areas along a coral reef, or where water movement is slow to moderate. Recommended Species for the Diaspora Recommended Species Gracilaria Eucuma cottoni. Specifically for people of the diaspora, it's best to shop for sea moss whose origins are near the Caribbean or the mother continent. 
types of Gracilaria sea moss. Purple sea moss has a stronger flavor and is high in antioxidants called anthocyanins. Anthocyanins are responsible for colors such as red, pink, and purple, which are found in sea moss. Anthocyanins are also present in blue fruits and vegetables. Anthocyanins may lower blood pressure, the risk of cardiovascular disease, and may improve visual activity. Anthocyanins are also reported to have anti-inflammatory and antibacterial activity. Plus, they may delay cellular aging. Green sea moss has a strong flavor profile and is rich in chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is chemically similar to hemoglobin, a protein that is essential in red blood cells as it carries oxygen around a person's body. Golden sea moss has a milder flavor and contains beta-cryptothanxin which supports intracellular communication. Beta-cryptosanthin is a precursor of vitamin A, an essential nutrient needed for eyesight, growth, development, and immune response. Full spectrum contains a variety of colors of sea moss. Consuming full spectrum is a great way to combine and diversify the complete nutritional benefits of the seaweed. Verify the sea moss source. Along with knowing the species of sea moss, it's important to verify the source of the sea moss. Verify the water is not contaminated. Verify the post-production process involves a thorough clean. Many communities now cultivate sea moss and process the product into sea moss gel, which is primarily used in the production of drinks. Did you know? Seaweed absorbs minerals and vitamins from the sea. If the body of water contains metals, pollutants, etc., the seaweed will soak in that as well. Again, while shopping for sea moss, it is recommended to ensure that the seaweed is organic and naturally derived from a high quality source or protected waters. Chapter five, how to incorporate seaweed daily. Seaweed is a great addition to any lifestyle to maximize diets. The taste can enhance recipes and the nutrients can enhance body performance. Each type of seaweed may contain slightly different nutrients and minerals. Types of seaweed to consume include nori, kelp, wakame, kombu, dulse, blue-green algae, such as spirulina, and chlorella. Seaweed is generally a good supply of protein, carbohydrates, fiber, minerals, polyunsaturated fatty acids. One easy way to incorporate seaweed into a daily regimen is by using a dried seaweed wrapper or nori sheet. The same seaweed found in a sushi restaurant. Nori sheets are great replacements for wraps. Nori sheets can easily break into pieces and be used as sprinkles for a salad or other dishes for a nutritional boost. Seaweed is also popular in Asian soups, such as miso soup. Seaweed blends have also been used in place of salt. Sea moss infused food and beverages. Another easy way to consume seaweeds is by using dried sea moss and turning it into a gel. By turning the sea moss into liquid, it makes it easy and convenient to add to your favorite meal or beverage. Smoothie infused, recommended daily. Cold drinks infused, water juice. Hot drinks infused, herbal tea, coffee. Stews and soups infused. Bread batter pancakes loaves infused, mixed with items cooked in water, quinoa oats, gravy infused, applesauce, banana sauce, avocado guacamole. Simple sea moss infused smoothies. Blend ingredients. One, strawberry, banana, kale, sea moss, spring water, ice. Two, kale, dates, banana, sea moss, spring water, ice. 3. Orange, banana, sea moss, dates, spring water, ice. 4. Mango, banana, kale, sea moss, spring water, ice. Optional, add hemp seeds to any smoothie mix for additional plant protein. Simple plant-based milk, safe for babies. Blend ingredients, hemp seeds, sea moss, spring water, dates. Optional. Sea moss in the beauty industry. Sea moss has made its way into the beauty care industry via its products such as soaps, face masks, hair conditioners, 
hair gel, and much more. CMOS contains a high concentration of collagen. Collagen is a protein found all over the body, especially in the skin. Collagen holds the body together. As we age, the production of the collagen protein slows down. This leads to wrinkles, and the face becomes one of the first places to show in reflection. CMOS is also rich in sulfur. Sulfur helps regenerative properties that help remove dead skin cells and replenish dry skin. Using CMOS is a great way to combat acne and aging skin. How to maximize CMOS daily. An easy way to maximize CMOS is to turn the raw CMOS into gel, powder, or capsules. Below are ways to use CMOS gel. Hair. Scalp moisturizing conditioner, daily mist, pre-poo, hair gel, shea butter infused. Skin. Toner, after facial cleansed. Skin conditioner, rub on skin to nourish. Face mask, for blemishes acne. Stretch marks. Eczema and psoriasis care, rub on affected areas once cleaned. Add to bath. Food and drinks. Fresh gel. Smoothie infused, recommended daily. Cold drinks infused, juice. Hot drinks infused, tea, coffee. Stews, soups infused. Bread batter, pancakes, loaves infused. Mixed with items cooked in water, quinoa oats. Gravy infused, salads. Making sea moss gel is a quick and efficient way of maximizing this seaweed for food, beverage, and body care. There are a variety of ways to make sea moss gel. For example, boiling the sea moss or using the simple technique explained below. A simple technique to make sea moss gel. One convenient way to make sea moss gel is to clean it, soak it, and blend it. Clean it. Pre-cleaning sea moss is one of the most important steps to properly preparing this nutrient-dense sea vegetable. Below are the steps to properly cleaning and prepping. 1. Thoroughly rinse sea moss using a container until all debris and salt are removed. This step may take 10 to 30 minutes. Time and results may vary, depending on sea moss. 2. When cleaning sea moss, it's important to allow dried sea moss to expand during the rinsing process. Be sure to use your hands actively when pre-rinsing, such as scrubbing the sea moss together or running your fingers down the moss. Continue the process of rinsing and straining the sea moss until no debris or particles are visible in the water. Pro tip. A good debris test is to fill the container with water and allow water to cover the sea moss. Allow the sea moss to sit for two minutes. If there is no visible debris in the water, then proceed to the next step. Finally, strain the sea moss until no water is visible. Soak it. Lastly, fill the container with water until the sea moss is covered. Allow sea moss to soak for at least 10 minutes. Although we recommend soaking for at least 10 minutes, the time may vary depending on the individual preference. We recommend using spring water to soak the sea moss. Once the soak is complete, the sea moss is ready to be placed in the blender. Although soaking is optional, please note that longer soaking times may reduce the salt taste and may help to expand the sea moss even further. Blend it. Materials needed. Cleaned sea moss, blender, spring water. Sea moss gel is a convenient and efficient way to incorporate a nutrient-dense superfood into a daily regimen through meals and beverages. Be sure to only use sea moss that has been cleaned to make sea moss gel. When making sea moss gel, results can vary. Follow the steps below. 1. Fill a 16-ounce container with sea moss. 2. Place sea moss into a blender. 3. Now add water to the blender with the sea moss inside. Fill to 32 ounces. Blend, extract sea moss until it's a gel. Note, texture of the gel may vary. If the sea moss gel is too thin, add more raw sea moss and blend to thicken. If sea moss is too thick, add a small amount of water and blend. Pro tip, to learn how to properly make sea moss gel, visit www.veganfiber.com. How to store sea moss. It's recommended to store dried sea moss in a cool, dry, dark place. Shelf life is approximately one year. 
Although some reports have stated that sea moss can be stored dry for many years until ready for use, we recommend using your own discretion and judgment. A warning sign that the sea moss has expired will be mold. It's recommended for sea moss gel to be stored in the refrigerator for up to four weeks, depending on the quality. If there is mold or a rancid smell, throw it out. Sea moss gel can be stored in the freezer for months at a time. When storing in the freezer, do not use glass to avoid glass expansion and potential break. Chapter 6 Sea moss for weight loss and fiber. Sea moss is packed with many nutrients, can satisfy the body's nutritional needs, and it's low in calories. Sea moss is great for gut health and will add much needed diversity to the gut microbiome. Four crucial factors for the gut system include anti inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral, and anti-aging properties. The prebiotic effect of sea moss makes the gut health and system run smoothly. It certainly eliminates harmful bacteria and improves overall health, including the increase of short-chain fatty acids. In short, sea moss is a great alternative for the body's immune system and gut health. Adding algae for weight loss is simple and will provide intestine-healthful prebiotic fiber, which in turn can aid with problems such as constipation or diarrhea. Algae for weight loss is ideal, especially since it carries only a few or no calories itself. Due to its fiber content, it's great for promoting satiety, decreasing bloating, and easing digestion. Soluble fiber can assist in feeding the intestine's microorganisms. Intestinal microorganisms break the fiber into compounds that enhance the immune system and intestine performance. Bacteria within the intestines play a critical role in breaking down meals and helping digestion. Algae generally tend to include excessive amounts of fiber, which may also make up 23% to 64% of the algae's dry weight. High fiber ingredients along with sea moss may also reduce cholesterol levels in the blood. These soluble fibers bind to bile acids or salts in the body. The body then makes use of cholesterol to replace those elements, which may help lower cholesterol. Why fiber is important? Dietary fiber is a critical nutrient and performs a key position in a wholesome weight and diet plan. Research shows that a whopping 95% of Americans aren't getting the encouraged minimum daily fiber. This may lead to poor gut diversity. Lack of gut diversity combined with calorie-rich diets play a devastating role in obesity and developing chronic diseases. Research links a heavy fiber diet with reduced risks of many health conditions such as cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and certain cancers. What is fiber? Fiber is a type of indigestible carbohydrate. Most carbohydrates are digested into sugar molecules but fiber passes through via the intestines without being digested. Fiber is what permits the body to apply sugars, reduces the danger of developing cardiovascular ailments, and keeps hunger and blood sugar levels in check. Below are six important signs and symptoms of fiber deficiency. One, constipation and bloating. Two, hunger after meals. Three, blood sugar fluctuations. Four, high cholesterol. 5. Fatigue and low energy. 6. Inflammation. Soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. There are two types of dietary fiber, soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber dissolves in water, while insoluble fiber does not. When dissolved, soluble fiber's consistency is a thick, gel-like substance in the stomach. It is broken down with the use of microorganisms in the large intestine. Soluble fiber slows digestion and helps you absorb nutrients from food. An increase in soluble fiber will impact blood glucose stabilization. Soluble fiber aids in lowering blood cholesterol and glucose levels. The quick chain fatty acids making up fiber have an impact on glycogen released in the liver. The glycogen stored in the liver accounts for around 14% of the body's available strength and energy. This way of obtaining proper portions of fiber results in a greater regular energy supply, key for top overall performance. Insoluble fiber draws water into and adds bulk to your stool, 
helping the stool pass more quickly through the intestines. Insoluble fiber does not dissolve. Instead, it passes through the gastrointestinal tract surprisingly intact. This type of fiber permits food to pass effectively through the digestive system, promotes bowel regularity, and prevents constipation. How much fiber do you need per day? According to the Food and Drug Administration, the recommended daily value for fiber is 28 grams or about 14 grams per 1,000 calories. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's 2015 to 2016 National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, a large quantity of Americans are not eating at least half of their encouraged amount of fiber. In fact, 95% of Americans are not eating the recommended consumption level of fiber. The Cleveland Clinic notes that people who eat 25 to 29 grams of fiber per day additionally see a 15% to 30% decrease in their risk of colon cancer, and it decreases the chance of developing coronary heart disease and diabetes. Fiber is found naturally in foods like complete whole grains, starches, fruits, vegetables, legumes, and nuts. It's commonly introduced to snack foods like cookies and granola bars. The fiber found in those types of snack products are commonly isolated fibers which can be synthetically made using chemicals. As mentioned, the daily recommended value for dietary fiber is about 28 grams per day. However, consuming higher doses of fiber beyond 50 grams per day will allow a person to see positive changes in their health conditions. Most Americans only get approximately 16 grams per day, according to the U.S. National Library of Medicine. Companies realize that fiber is part of a healthy gut, so they advertise fiber to attract nutrient-conscious consumers. Not getting sufficient fiber for your eating regimen results in fiber deficiency. If you don't get enough fiber, you may experience abnormal bowel movement, constipation, blood sugar fluctuations, and lack of satiety after eating, or an upward thrust in cholesterol levels. There are a few microorganisms that stay in our gut which may be important to maintaining a healthful immune system. Fiber is what feeds those microorganisms and allows them to do their job. An excessive amount of nutritional fiber delays the gut emptying. As a result, the gut may not send indicators of starvation to the mind for an extended time. This may assist with the prevention of overeating. Chapter 7. Sea Moss for Fasting Fasting is a great way to detox and reset the body. There are many different types of fast, such as intermittent fasting and liquid fasting. Intermittent fasting involves cycling between periods of eating and fasting, ranging from a few hours to a few days at a time. Intermittent fasting can trigger some significant changes in the way your body processes energy, which can help you lose fat and potentially reap other significant benefits. Liquid fasts eliminate the intake of any solid food while only consuming liquids. This fast can be beneficial to tackle some digestive tract problems, such as diarrhea or Crohn's disease. Liquids are easy to digest and help to clean out the body's gastrointestinal GI tract. Committing to a CMOS only fast will create massive dietary and wellness results. Simply starting with a 72-hour CMOS and water fast will jumpstart your fasting journey in a positive direction. We suggest making CMOS gel into consuming the CMOS gel throughout the day along with drinking a gallon of water daily. This fasting technique alone will not only detox the body, but replenish the body with important vitamins and minerals it needs to function optimally. It's important to prepare your body for a fast. Preparation of at least three weeks is best. The more time allotted to prepare the body for a fast, the easier and more effective the fasting process may be. One may experience less toxic reactions due to preparation. Pro tip. A great way to prepare is to commit to 100% plant-based eating. Avoid all dairy, eggs, animal products, and processed sugar. Chapter 8. CMOS for Fitness. CMOS is a great pre- and post-workout supplement. It may help speed up joint recovery, help reduce joint swelling, improve flexibility, and promote overall mobility. CMOS is a vegan collagen. 
Collagen is critical for helping to repair and maintain other parts of the body after a strenuous workout. Collagen is also needed for bone density and flexibility. Sea moss is a good source of many micronutrients, which may help muscle recovery, especially after a high impact exercise. These micronutrients may help keep muscle soreness at bay, all while fighting off the free radicals. Try this. Consume sea moss before and after each workout and feel the difference. Pro tip. Anytime you crave a particular type of food or beverage that is not helping the wellness goals, drink sea moss gel. Take a few shots of the sea moss gel. Keep drinking it until that craving subsides. Chapter 9. Nutrients for Perinatal Care We recommend consulting with a medical professional as well. Nutrients for pregnancy. Daily recommended amount. Why mom and fetus need it. Herbal and plant-based sources. Calcium. 1 to 1.3 grams. Builds strong bones and teeth. Dark green leafy vegetables. Kale, sesame seeds, tahini, squash, zucchini, quinoa, nori wrap, dried figs, Brazil nuts, moringa leaf, nettle leaf, red raspberry leaf, elderberry. Iron, 27 milligrams. Helps red blood cells deliver oxygen to your fetus. Sea moss, quinoa, chickpeas, nori, hemp seeds, nettle leaf, burdock root, red raspberry leaf, elderberry, sarsaparilla root, dandelion root. Yellow dock. Iodine, 220 milligrams. Essential for healthy brain development. Sea moss, kelp, seaweeds, onions. Choline, 450 milligrams. Important for development of your fetus's brain and spinal cord. Sea moss, bananas, apple, Brussels sprouts, chickpeas, dates, quinoa, squash, green leafy vegetables. Vitamin A, 750 to 770 milligrams. Forms healthy skin and eyesight. Helps with bone growth. Green leafy vegetables, kale, squash, zucchini, red pepper, mango, nori, sea moss, red raspberry leaf, elderberry. Vitamin C, 80 to 85 milligrams. Promotes healthy gums, teeth, and bones. Bell peppers, kale, strawberries, Brussels sprouts, mango, oranges, raspberries, tomatoes, onions, nori wrap, avocados, berries, green leafy vegetable, red raspberry leaf. Vitamin D, 600 international units. Build your fetus's bones and teeth. Helps promote healthy eyesight and skin. Sunlight, sea moss. Vitamin B6, 1.9 milligrams. Helps form red blood cells. Helps the body use protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Avocados, quinoa, bananas, oranges, tahini, sesame seeds, Brussels sprouts, tomatoes, walnuts, onions, red raspberry leaf. Vitamin B12, 2.6 microgram. Maintains nervous system. Helps form red blood cells. Supplement cyanobalamin, sublingual or chewable, is recommended for better absorption. Folate, the natural form of folic acid. Folic acid, 600 micrograms. Helps prevent birth defects of the brain and spine. Supports the general growth and development of the fetus and placenta. Dark green leafy vegetables, kale, asparagus, oranges, bananas, chickpeas, sea moss, onions, avocados, lettuce, mango, nettle leaf, elderberry, omega-3 fatty acid, 650 milligrams, are critical building blocks of the fetal brain and retina, may also play a role in determining the length of gestation. Sea moss, nori wrap, walnuts, hemp seeds, avocados, olive oil, alfalfa leaf. Chapter 10. Sea moss for children and family. Zero M until. 
children can begin consuming sea moss from birth via the mother's breast milk. Mothers can also make plant milk alternatives and infuse the sea moss directly into it. Sea moss infused food and beverages section for plant based baby's milk. Incorporating sea moss into the children's diet is a great way to support healthy development. Sea moss is a great source of iodine, which may provide children with better focus and help with normal cognitive function. Sea moss is a great source of calcium, which may keep a child's bones stronger and teeth healthier. Sea moss is a great source of iron, which may help transport oxygen around the body and give the child a good source of energy. Sea moss is a great source of fiber, which may keep the child feeling full for longer and may help them focus on learning. Chapter 11 Conclusion Without the proper portions of fiber, the health of your immune system can also be compromised. Failing to fulfill every day's recommended fiber intake may also have an impact on one's mood and cognition. When levels of healthful microorganisms in the gut are stabilized, the chance of intellectual health disorders such as depression are lowered. Fiber enhances mood and cognition through the second brain, which refers to the nerves in the gut that speak with the brain. Simply said, if you want a sound body, optimal health, and the secrets to the fountain of youth, incorporate a balanced seaweed diet. This has concluded The Secret to the Fountain of Youth, Sea Mossology, written by Jamari Kirby and Shayna Maud. So, is sea moss the new wonder food?